Gideon, thank you. Let's have a look through the papers for you this morning with radio presenter Ian Lee and theologian Vicky Beach. Good morning to you both. I like morning. the Korean you there. The Korean, Korean you broadcast. The same yeah. hair, the same <laughs> shirt and tie. It's same nice. style of delivery. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, no, very similar. Uh, oh, just hearing about teachers, yes. you picked this out in the uh, Observer this morning, Ian. This is, uh, this is incredible. This is the story. Teachers must get trained or face the sack, says Labour. I only heard this a few months ago, that, that you don't need to be a qualified teacher to teach in these free schools. It's, it's all about the life experience. So they're getting uh, ex-military and people from different walks of life to come in and teach the kids, which has bonuses and benefits, I think. But the fact they've not had a teaching qualification or any training in teaching. So mm. um, uh, th this all came in uh, uh, under Michael Gove and Stephen Twigg, the Shadow Education Secretary, is saying if Labour get in, these teachers need to, need to uh, get a formal qualification within two years, otherwise face the sack. As a parent of two boys who are a little bit too young to go to school yet, but will do one day, uh, I just find it incredible that there are people who may have different and unique mm. life skills that, that, that uh, could be very valuable to young people, but they are working in classrooms every day, teaching kids. You can't just go in and teach. But it, it are, these, means... are, are these clusters actually? What is, there's always confusion between teachers and teaching assistants. I was wondering the same thing mm. because there is actually a lot to be said of learning on the ground. Yep. Uh, lots of my friends with the teaching profession being pushed so hard in recent years have got PGCs, mm. and you know it's that one year concentrated training, and then you go into the school, and most of them have actually said to me that the hands-on work actually was far more illuminating in terms of teaching you how to teach than the PGC was uh, you know, in the university lecture hall. So I wonder whether these people are actually getting a bit of a bad press because they're practically getting all of the training hands-on with the kids. But you and need both, the, don't you? I think you, you do, the, the, but the I think one without the other. The I think they've probably got a lot more to offer than, than it sounds, I think. Oh, I think, no, I think they have got a lot to offer. And you know, someone who's served in Afghanistan, I'm not mm. quite sure what they'd be teaching a child, but they certainly have a unique uh, perspective with discipline, yeah, do as you're told. <laughs> uh, and they, they certainly do have, uh, uh, you know, it's important that kids are educated from all different kinds of, of walks of life. But I don't think these, they are being classed as teachers. They are actually classed as teachers, not, te not training, uh, teaching assistants, classroom assistants. And I do think that's wrong. I, do, I don't want people just walking, it's not quite walking in off the street, but I don't want them teaching my kids mm. without the right qualifications. I think it demeans teachers that have been qualified yeah, as well. Yeah, that's fair, enough. Say fair, that, fair yeah. enough. I mean, anything we can do to up the standards of is course, a good thing. Of course, up very the good thing. standards. It's just, it's just a bit of an odd line to sort of go into an election saying we'll, we'll, we'll sack 5,000 teachers. Yeah, yeah, I think I just would love to see like proof that they'd winner, underperformed. I think that would per persuade me that it was really worth I'm suspicious yeah. of these free schools. You're not suspicious of them. I'm suspicious of them. Are you? Yeah. Well, someone who doesn't have any children, <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I don't overly care, is which is the, rea the reality, because I, well, I don't have to deal with it, do I? You will do in about 15, 20 years' time when they're sat on this couch with you, the products of these free schools, dribbling and talking like idiots. <laughs> they're not. They're not. I'll get abuse on Twitter. So, for that. yes, Sorry. you will. You will. Goodness, that's um, a joke. Look, let's, let's have, uh, cheer ourselves up with a, a bit of royalty. Now, I, I, I annoy some people, I know, but I, I like the royal family. I'm a bit of a royalist, and I thought yesterday was, was lovely. And everyone's got the eyes on Kate, of course, haven't they? They have. Well, I was there yesterday. Oh, were it was, you? Uh, it was lovely. A massive turnout and a real buzz. And obviously, Kate totally stole the show, as you would expect. Um, some of the things that made me laugh were uh, insinuations that her pink outfit meant that she's having a girl, that it's <laughs> you know psychological message sending to us. But uh, it was a really, really great day. And I think um, everybody would expect her to have stolen the show. There's been a few negative comments that the Queen hasn't really been on any of the front pages today. And that is all about Kate. But I think, um, as, a, as a proud grandmother, she would be only too happy about that. Yeah, and this is nice. I mean, I always like the, if I, it's a bit small there, but I'll give it, give it the best shot. But these balcony shots are always, are always lovely, aren't they? Prince William, is, he's 31. I remember him being born. He's always like a sort of a, a, a kid to me. I'm You're a, very old. Yeah. I, I was, I was, I was, I was William and I are basically the same age, so that oh. makes you ancient. Oh, oh, God. Last, <laughs> no, I am ancient. Last Sunday I turned 40 years old. Can you believe it? Surely That's not, true. with those youthful looks. There we go, Surely you see. Not. She's good. Get her back. I like her. Better than Nikki Chapman, who's very rude. <laughs> oh. Very rude woman. She's in Australia. She can't see this. I know she's in Australia at the minute. No, it's very unfair. She's. I she's love she's, Nikki Chapman. She's very nice. She's got the hardship of, of filming people buying houses in Australia, which are. It's lovely. Isn't Tough it? job. Difficult. She'll be doing all those nice uh, beach scenes. There you go. I thought it was a, a lovely thing yesterday. Really? And, um, and these, I can't wait for this baby to arrive. It'll be lovely. It really will. Did you notice also, um, apparently, Harry uh, was messing around and goofing about tickling Kate at one point and pulling faces? And Looks like he's tickling Camilla there, doesn't it? There's, there's a, 
there was him cracking a joke with Camilla, him kind of poking Kate, Kate in the side. I think there's just a real genuine sense of uh, humanity and fun that I think is... And privilege. Brilliant. And privilege. Well... <laughs> You're like a on. rain cloud. Harry works very hard. <laughs> we can't underestimate what he does. Um, there you go. Now, autistic children. I had an autistic um, charity on a, a few weeks ago, and um, it was, it's fascinating, actually, to to get that connection, because we hear about autistic children, mm. but most of us, of course, don't have any connection yeah. with them. This is a brilliant story. This is, uh, and it's funny, I was talking about this on my radio show a few weeks ago, because of a friend I, I work with who has uh, a relative who's, who's autistic. They're going to introduce, and they, they do it in small theatres around the country, um, but it's the National Theatre are going to have an autistic uh, uh, run of programmes. So it means it's more relaxed, and so what it means is, um, it, it, sometimes autistic children get a little bit scared if the lights go down, so it's going to be a little bit lighter. Um, they may get rid of, rid of the intervals because that can be confusing to autistic children. Confusing to me, why would you stop in the middle of a play? Um, they'll give warnings. Ice yeah, well, I suppose so. <laughs> They're going to give warnings if loud bits are going to come up. And also, it's going gonna, it's gonna to mean that the audience can make a little bit more noise. Because quite often with disabled children and autistic children, uh, they don't have the same social skills that mean when you sit in a theatre you keep quiet. Mm. And they can't quite often can't keep quiet. Mm. Uh, and I've heard of, of, of people with disabled children or autistic children who've been asked to leave theatres and cinemas because they're to. making too much noise, yeah. which is mm. which is Very terrible. Serious. I can quite like to see it on the, mm. the part of the other people who've paid, but I think it's terrible and discriminatory. This is brilliant because it means that autistic children and other disabilities can go to the theatre, can be involved in it, they can make a bit more noise if they want, they won't feel excluded, they won't be asked to, to, left, to, to, to leave. And I think this is brilliant. And, and, and more and more cinemas and theatres are doing this kind of thing, which is mm. great, which is a they wonderful thing Some in London that have started. And I, I agree London. with you. I think it really is the best of both worlds, because if you're going to a show and you're excited about it, it is a bit distracting to lose that sense of the magic of being caught up in this reality because somebody's you know, making sound. But then at the same time, yep. they really do need to be catered for, because mm. it's just so unfair to get yeah. sort of and discriminated against. And view cinemas and Odeon cinemas, I think they do, they do a, a kind of autistic it's quite a broad category there, screening once a month. Mm, a lot of them do, do it once a month yeah. or once every couple of weeks right. so that people can go in. I think it's brilliant. It's yeah. a great idea, actually, because I, I can imagine that to exclude people from that type of art or entertainment actually is, would be quite damaging. Yeah. Everyone yeah. Can and their needs are so that. unique. Like it says in here that they're actually allowing them to do a walk around first. Yeah. Some of my friends have got autistic kids, and one of the things they find really difficult is unusual environments. Yeah. Mm. So as soon as they walk into a strange environment, they're kind of reacting to it, and that exacerbates the need to kind of talk. You've taken your kid uh, to a thing, and someone says, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, your child's being too noisy. Could you, could mm. you leave? How mm. awful for you, how awful yeah. for the child's crushing. For their confidence. Mm. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Oh, well, that's good. It's nice to have a positive story to end on this section. We've got more coming up for you in just... ...of the Sunday Telegraph. Um, a metre that won't take pounds. Yeah, this is great. So uh, in Bradford, there's been a parking meter that's been completely perplexing both um, the officials and uh, the punters because every coin they put in, it rejects and it's been out of order for ages. They couldn't figure it out. And it turns out that actually it was made in France and it only takes euros. Way. So it's taken three months for them to figure that out. But Fab. it's uh, kind of everybody's parking dream because I would imagine if it's out of order, probably you don't have to pay. So no. yeah, you can still get a ticket, can't you? Can you really? Yeah, yeah. 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 It's so cruel. Yeah, <laughs> I hope that, nobody did. Yeah, if, 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 if they're out of order, they, you're not allowed to park yeah. there. That's crazy. But for me, really, the, the mystery of this whole thing is why we're still really using coins anyway. You know, I'm very digitally uh, oh, yeah. digital yeah. fangirl. Yeah. But I think with a machine like that, it's oh. bizarre to me that there isn't no, just a kind no, of swipe I... or a scan or a. I parked in Central London the other day. I did that thing where you phone up and you yeah, give them yeah, these yeah. things like that. I thought it had gone through. I come back, £65 oh, parking no. ticket. That's oh. So you can stick your futuristic <laughs> oh, tax no. bill No sci-fi for you. No, right, no, so I want coins, coins in there. I want to see something come out that <laughs> yeah. can stick in my window. Oh, no. £65. I, pounds. That's a lot that's of money. Mm. No, I always use that phone thing. And it's I do too. Yeah, yeah but you get very confirmation. Good. Well, I may, have, I may have hung up a little bit before the confirmation. <laughs> yes, before you actually put in your credit Do card you details. That, that'll be the key to it. Um, <laughs> let's have a look at... What are selfies? Se well, this, I only discovered this word quite recently. Selfies are the new internet phenomenon stroke sensation. Basically, a selfie is, and I would do it, but I haven't got my phone, is you get your phone and you, oh, take, right. ching, you take pictures of yourself. They're called selfies, <laughs> and they've now been... Look at the teeth. They've now been given the official thumbs up because Hillary and Chelsea Clinton... Uh, have taken their own selfies. It's the new phenomenon. I've, uh, I've, I've, <laughs> I've got no idea who these young people are on the well, other well, side. I, I know who this one is. 
Yeah. Is that Bieber? That's Bieber. <laughs> okay, you've got Bieber fever. But he's, unusually, yeah. he's got a top on. And you've got Miley, uh, Miley Ray Cyrus and her mum. Yeah. Oh, so I don't know who any of these other it, people is are. That, Rihanna, is that her? There's Rihanna yeah, as Rihanna, well. Katy Perry. Is that a, okay, so, so but basically... Miley Cyrus. Which yeah. one's Rihanna? Uh, At the top uh, of the glasses. Yeah. Oh, is it? Top oh, of the glasses. Rimi. Is that Rimi? Oh, hold on. Ella, Ella, Ella. Yeah. There we go. Oh, look, and she's doing something naughty in bed with someone else. But it's the, it's the new thing, is, is taking a selfie. Yeah. Have you done yours? Yourself. This is the key question. I, ha I haven't done mine. I'm going to go and do mine backstage immediately. Well, you need to and bring it on here and do a selfie someone. with all of us, and then, and then, then you can tweet it. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, let's I'll come on when you're doing your next bulletin. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah, just run in. <laughs> um, we'll finish off a quick look at the bell ringing row in the mails on Sunday. This is so funny. I grew up in a little village where we had um, bell ringers, and I actually have to confess that I did actually learn. I went to a bell You're ringing a club. That's how rock and roll my childhood was. I went to a bell <laughs> ringing club. And uh, there's a little village here called um, Bramshot in Hampshire, and since 1784, they've been ringing their bells on Sunday mornings. And they've got a relatively new vicar. He's moved the service from 11.15 uh, back to 9.15. Right. So now they have to choose. Do they ring their bells before 9 a.m. in the morning and uh, make everybody mad? Oh, here's your new vicar. Or do they hey? just uh, do they quit? So oh. there's basically a standoff between the vicar and the bell ringers, and uh, it's just one of those classic village standoffs. And at the moment, they are at an impasse. <laughs> We're English. <laughs> Have your bells ringing on Sunday I like a bit of bell Sunday ringing on morning. Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but before 9am? Yeah. Oh, nice. oh, it sounds oh, like get straight on, out of some old um, sitcom, it, doesn't it? It really does. That's just yeah. exactly what it is. Love it. Uh, look, we'll see you in an hour. Look forward to that. Well, let's get a check on the sports headlines, Charlie.